Today I'm going to show how to shoot tether on the Sony a7R 3 using the minimal amount of um, additional equipment um, and still be able to tether at uh, very efficiently. Here you have the Sony a7R 3 with the attached um, provided cable protector. I have a computer with me. I'm just showing you here a laptop, but I'm actually going to use a desktop for the demonstration. And the only item that you really need to purchase separately that is specific to this application is a tethering cable. The Sony a7R 3 uses a USB format called USB-C, which is the latest USB uh, connector type. And um, <clears throat> the other end of your cable can be specific to your particular computer. And it's avail these co cables are available in USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB 3.0, such as uh, the cable I have here. The data transfer rate uh, from the camera to the computer is the same whether you, use, you are using USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB 3.0. The provided cable protector is actually a cable port protector and it's provided in your box with your Sony a7R 3 um, There is a uh, somewhat of a design flaw with this uh, cable protector. For the USB-C uh, slot, um, the slot isn't wide enough to accept a high quality USB-C um, cable. Um, these cables often have um, sort of a fatter ridge uh, to improve, I think, their dur durability. And this prevents the USB-C cable from sliding into that slot. I don't know if you can see, but the cable uh, protrusion here prevents it from sliding into the slot. And that's because of a tiny plastic ridge just on the edge of the USB-C slot provided uh, by Sony. And the simple solution uh, for this is to file away um, that little ridge. It's not the full length of the channel that's too narrow, it's just this ridge. So I've done so, and it took me just a few minutes. Make sure that you blow away all the filings so that you don't get bits of plastic into uh, your camera ports. And once you do that, the cable uh, inserts easily. There is a cable holder part of all this that helps to manage your cable and prevents the port from coming out. It's actually quite efficient. You can um, guide the cable from above or from below and then just screw back on the cap um, on proper axis and this should hold your cable. Do not over tighten this. It only needs to be tight enough to prevent this cable to slide around so that if you accidentally jerk on the camera, you don't disconnect it. If you tighten this down really tight, you may damage the cable. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go to the Sony support page and download and install the Sony Edge group of software that includes the remote, the viewer, and the ed editor. For shooting tether, you really need the remote and the viewer, but I think it all comes down as one package. Once you install this software, you will find it in your launch pad, um, and the remote is the application that uh, connects to your camera for uh, tether shooting, and the viewer is the software that allows you to actually see the images as they come in uh, to your computer while you are shooting. The first thing we're going to do is decide on the file format that we want to save to our SD cards and uh, our computer. And this can be found in the menu under camera one, page 
one of 14 um, on this version of the firmware. Here I'm going to change the file format from RAW plus JPEG to RAW alone. It would appear that this camera is actually faster um, to write RAW and RAW than RAW uh, plus JPEG, even though the JPEG files are smaller. Um, they don't need to be processed before they are saved. The next thing we have to do is set up the USB connection type. And this can be found in the setup for menu or the small briefcase uh, icon menu on page four of seven in the current uh, firmware version. And here you can see USB connection and it needs to be set to PC remote. Then if you scroll down, you have a menu setting called PC remote settings. And if you go into this, you can decide um, the still image save destination. And here I have PC plus camera uh, selected, which means that my raw files will be saved locally on my SD card as well as to the computer that will be connected through the tethering cable. I've now turned the camera completely off. My uh, USB-C um, to USB 3.0 is connected to the camera USB-C port and secured with the uh, Sony cable protector. As I indicated, do not over tighten the cable fastener as you may damage the cable in doing so. The next thing I'm going to do is just connect the USB 3.0 uh, cable to my computer. Okay, I now have the camera connected to my computer. My computer is on, but the Sony um, Image Edge software has not been launched yet. The sequence or the proper sequence of uh, getting a proper uh, tether connection, uh, I believe, is to first turn on the camera. And this will take the camera to a screen showing that it is attempting to connect to your computer. This typically takes a few seconds. If you immediately try to launch the Sony Edge software, it will give you an error. If you just wait a few seconds before you proceed to launching the software, everything should work fine. And the first thing I usually do is I launch the uh, Sony Edge remote software first and while the camera is trying to connect, I just launch the Sony remote software from my computer and it usually works just fine. So if we um, move this to full screen, this is the Sony um, remote software. For most tethering applications, you really don't need to watch this particular uh, piece of software. You can control all of the camera settings through it, but um, in this case, all we are interested in is uh, being able to shoot tether in a studio setting with the minimum amount of uh, equipment to purchase and yet still get a highly efficient um, tethering setup. So my camera is now um, my camera is now connected to my computer and what you are seeing now is the live view on my computer screen of what I'm seeing on my camera. So if we adjust the exposure, we can see that we're getting a live adjustment of the exposure. And if I focus, we're getting proper focus. If I take a picture, I don't see the pictures 
in the remote software and the place to see this is in the viewer. There is a setting in the remote software if you go into re uh, remote settings and then display preview in viewer box then appears. This was ticked uh, uh, by default so just I'm going to reactivate this then press OK and now if you do take um, a photo with the camera tethered to your computer using the remote software. We're currently in the remote software. It should launch, let's just focus, it should launch the viewer application and show you um, the image in the viewer and it opens it in a different window and here you go. This is the image that we just took um, while tethered in the remote software. If I back up a little bit here, you can see the thumbnail on the side over here. And if we take another photo, we're now used in the viewer software so we don't have a live view, but if I take a photo, that's the delay for the full image to appear. Let's do that again. I'm now currently tethered on a Sony a7R 3 using a USB-C to USB 3.0 cable connected to an iMac. The remote Sony software is used to control the camera or to control the tether connection and the Sony viewer software is what's allowing me to actually see the images as they appear on my computer. So if I going to show you the back of my camera here so you know I'm not making this up. See I'm focusing. That's not the image that you're seeing on the screen. This is the previous image I've taken. To see the image in live you have to go back to the remote software. That's the live image and so if I can focus somewhere else it'll take it out of focus. If I focus on I focus on this uh, statue. So that's my live image. Let's go back to the viewer software where we see the files um, arriving into the computer. So again, if I take an image, that's the delay. So the delay is in the order of one, maybe two seconds. Let me take another image. Let me set uh, my exposure here. And there you go, we got three. So if you listen, and that's the delay. So the delay is one, maybe two seconds at the most. If you shoot in burst mode, that's how quickly they appear. And I did some math. If I shoot in burst, burst mode, um, to a point that completely fills the buffer of the camera, I get something like 135 compressed raw images to fill my buffer on the Sony a7R 3 using a single SD card in slot 1. Um, and it's a Lexar 2000X card, so I have the maximum uh, write speed with this combination. I get 135 images to fill the buffer and the average time it takes for the images to appear in my computer is about 0.4 seconds. So very fast in burst mode. So there you have it. This is how you connect a Sony a7R 3 with the minimal amount of equipment. The only thing you have to purchase is the proper USB uh, cable. You can use the Sony uh, free software to remote control your camera or to remote tether your camera and the Sony viewer software will show you these images on your computer while you're tethering. With this setup the tethering is highly efficient. Um, I believe it's just as efficient as uh, the other applications that are available on the market that you must pay and purchase. This is completely free. The images are imported into your computer but you can import them separately if you want using 
um, your SD card the way you would normally do after your uh, shooting session and the purpose here of shooting tethered is to directly save the files to computer to your computer but mostly to be able to preview the files while you're shooting and um, make sure that everything is okay in terms of your composition the image quality and more importantly the focus so while you are in this Sony viewer software and you are looking at the photos you can pick any photos or as they arrive and then you can easily zoom in you can click one button to get one-to-one -one, uh, pixel you can set um, the, uh, the enlargement uh, rate you can pan around you can use your fingers to zoom in and zoom out so you can fairly efficiently um, check your the, um, the accuracy of your focus check your framing and everything else I don't think you can preset um, picture profiles or uh, presets to um, adjust your images so that you can see them differently than they are uh, saved so in raw they will appear flat if you are tethering and um, they're being transferred in a JPEG format. Obviously, you can set the uh, image style in the camera and um, have an adjusted image on your screen. If you do double click on one of these images, it will open up the Sony uh, editor software. And in this software, you can make uh, adjustments to the, image, to the image and apply all the usual adjustments. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. It's a brief video showing how to shoot tether with the Sony a7R 3 using uh, a third-party USB-C cable, using um, the computer you currently have, a laptop or a desktop computer, and using the free Sony Edge software the results I get are excellent the tethering speed is very fast the only minor issues are the Sony viewer software and the ease of uh, navigation and uh, zooming in zooming out there's a very small learning curve but once you figure it out um, it's pretty easy to use